I don't exactly know who it was that said life is stranger than fiction, or was it truth is stranger than... Yeah, whatever. The events I'm about to recall were so strange in the field of coincidence that if I had been told them rather than experienced them, I would have said hogwash. It all started in that day when I'd received two inquiries for my services from two completely different clients. Needless to say, most welcome calls after three weeks of sheer nothingness. Did you ever hear of the... Harrington kidnapping case? Are you that same Harrington? I didn't know that. It was about 10 years ago. 12 years ago, last January. Do you recall any of the details? Mm, some. There's a little girl, three or four. Three. The only child, uh, he paid a ransom. A very large ransom, as I recall. Quarter of a million dollars. And the child was never returned. The police never found any trace of Ellen or her kidnappers. Mr. Ross, that first year, four people came up with claims as to Ellen's whereabouts. Second year, there were three. Each year, somebody has come up to say that they know where our daughter is. All the claims false, of course. And now another one has come up, huh? A woman this time. She claims Ellen is alive. I want you to meet her. All the details are here. Follow her instructions. Get her story. Maybe... Eh, it'll probably be like all the others, but... See what she has to say. Mr. Harrington, why don't you go to the police? No. Police would mean publicity. Photographs. Sunday supplements rehashing the whole story. My wife couldn't take that again. I don't think I could. She's had two nervous breakdowns already. Another disappointment might kill her. Margaret, it... Mr. Ross, the only thing that keeps my wife going is a psychic quack. He calls himself Thaddeus. Thaddeus? Yes. He helps her, so I put up with him. He's trying to make her accept Ellen's death, which is more than a psychiatrist, and I've tried three, has been able to do. 
Doctors are handicapped. They can't promise the living to contact the spirits of the dead. This is my home phone number. We're surveying a new oil field, so if you call me, say you're a geologist. Geologist. Well, I can pass for a lot of things. I should be able to pass for a geologist. <laughs> You're at the right alley at the right time. Just following the instructions in your letter. All of them? All of them. You said no cops and no cops. My name is David Ross. What do I call you? Curious. I'm a private investigator. And I'm a Sadie Birch. Come on. Why did Mr. Harrington come with you? Well, he thought that we might uh, understand each other better. Sure. You look like more my type. Yeah. You got a story to tell? Yeah, one your client will be very glad to hear. You want some coffee? That's all they serve here. Coffee, tea, milk. I sound like an airline hostess, don't I? Sort of. What's your story? My husband died two weeks ago. I'm sorry to hear about your loss. Oh, it was a terrible loss. Harry left me with no dough and a 15-year-old kid to support. His kid? She came with the marriage. You have a sympathetic nature. Yeah, I'm known for that. Oh, I loved Marcy. I raised her since she was three, treated her just like my own kid. And then I found out that she ain't even Harry's kid. How did you find that out? Well, I was going through Harry's things, and I come across an old shoe box, and it had those clippings in it, you know, from the Harrington kidnapping? Yeah, well, people collect all kinds of things. Yeah, but Harry collected something special, a baby shoe the same size and the same color that the Harrington kid wore during the snatch. Even to the built-up special inner soul that the newspapers made such a big play about. Really? Yeah, that grabs you, doesn't it? Where is this shoe? I didn't bring it with me, but you'll see it. Like I said, I love Marcy. I really do, and... Well, I'm just willing to, to sacrifice my feelings for her sake and, and let her go back to her own parents. Yeah, sure, sure you will. And the sacrifice is all for love, hmm? You both? No, not during business hours. How about the sacrifice? Now, you expect nothing in return, of course, except uh, possibly a small gift from the Harringtons, because they've got so much, and you have so little, right? You understand a mother's heart. <laughs> yeah. Much, but it's it's our little nest. Marcy's gonna miss her home. And me. Yeah, well, she can dry her tears on all that Harrington money. Money's a good bandage for a broken heart. Yeah, I bleed for you. Where's the girl? I got a head. I think with it. Harrington might have had the cops tail you and grab the kid. Relax, will you? Relax. Harrington is following your instructions. The cops aren't in on this. Good. Yeah, but you got to produce the girl before I make a report to Harrington. I'm the manager, handsome. I call the place. All right, beautiful. Now then. These are all the clippings that were in the L.A. newspaper. Must come quite a shock to you, huh, that your husband had been mixed up in a kidnapping? No, it wasn't. 
If you knew Harry, you'd know he's the only guy in the world that could go in for a kidnapping and wind up with no dough and a kid to support. 250 grand paid, and Harry never got a cent of it. How do you know that? He was living in a dump crummier than this when we got married. And that was less than a year after the kidnapping. No, Harry didn't get any of that loot. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe he wasn't the only one in on the heist, huh? Maybe Harry spent all the loot before you met him. Well, there'd be some signs of it. He didn't even have a new suit when we got married. This'll grab Harrington. And grab you the brass ring, huh? Well, that's better than the dirty end of the stick. You know, I don't want to be greedy, but I was thinking about... Uh, 50,000 to begin with? Yeah, yeah, well, let's check the merchandise and make sure of that before we talk price, huh? Yeah, that's exactly, exactly as they had it in the newspapers. Hello? No, Mrs. Zabrowski, she ain't here. She's on her way. So she missed the bus. Yes, yeah, she knows. Hermosa Beach Bus. Don't worry, she'll be there. Yeah. But so get somebody else. That's the way it is. Marcy ain't the only babysitter in the world. Goodbye. You make a deal with Harrington, and I'll make a date for him to see Marcy. Tell me. Does Marcy know anything about this? Why make a big thing with a kid till it's settled? However, she will cooperate, eh? She'll cooperate. I... Yeah, I know, I know. You're the manager. Yeah, yeah. I expect to hear from you. Oh, you will. One question. You were married to Harry all those years. How come you never came across his junk before? A wife doesn't snoop around in her husband's private affairs. It ain't good taste. What was his first wife's name? He never used it. Should I tell you what he called her instead? No, thanks. Where were they married? How should I know? I never ask a guy what he did or where he did it before he came into my life. You're very genteel. Zabronsky. Huh? 129, 129 South Brill Street. Oh, Marcy, I uh, rang the doorbell out front, but uh, nobody answered, so I came around back. Mrs. Zabronski isn't home. No, no. No, my name's David Ross. I'm a, an old friend of your father's. Oh, you knew Daddy? Yep, yep. Well, I just got back into town. I got back into L.A. again, and, uh, well, I heard about Harry, about your dad, and I, uh, I'm sorry. Thank you. So I heard you were out here in Hermosa Beach. I thought I'd drive out here and see how things were with you. Nice of you. Guess you liked my father a lot. He, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I, I roam around a lot, and I haven't seen him much lately. But he was quite a guy, quite a guy. He was nice. Wasn't home much, but when he was, we used to talk a lot. Yeah, about your problems, like old buddies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wanted me to learn to be practical, because that's the way the world is. He said. Yeah, that's that's true. Well, did you learn? I'm not sure. My daddy said ever since I was little, I had a wild imagination. He said it wasn't healthy. He said I always remembered things all wrong, or things that never happened at all. Uh-huh. Like what? It's funny. Ever since I can remember, there, there was this lady's face. I was sure it was my mother, my real mother, not Sadie. I used to tell my father about her, how real she was in my memory. But he said that wasn't the way my mother looked at all. No matter how many times he told me I was wrong, I still remembered the lady's face. I still thought she was my mother. What do you think now? I mean, now, now that you're all grown up. <laughs> I guess it's the way my father always said. It's just a picture I was remembering from someplace. Well, Harry always was uh, practical, you know? 
I guess he just didn't understand a dreamy kid. So many things I thought were real, Daddy called dreams. You know, it's hard to tell even now what I dreamed and what I remembered. There's one thing Daddy could never explain. Not really. What was that? How could I have the same dream over and over again? Always the same big house with the garden and the fountain with the little boy and the dolphin. That's a big fish. Yeah, I know. Why did I dream about the dolphin so often? Did I see it once? Was it just like Daddy said? My imagination. Geologist with a headache. Come in, Mr. Ross. Mr. Harrington is expecting you. Would you work right here, please, sir? Without the basis of being, he's like a ship without a rudder. Mystic flame, passivity, psychic transformation. We can talk in there. A meeting of the Society of the Luminous Path. Oh, yeah. Who, who's that? That is. Oh, that's that is. He holds the sessions here for the convenience of my wife. Remembering that there is no separation. Let me see it, please. That's right, it's just the clippings. The shoe got away from me. How could the shoe get away? I was cold caught in your driveway. By whom? I didn't see. Who else knew I was bringing the shoe here, Mr. Harrington? I didn't tell anyone. Well, somebody could have listened in when I called you an hour ago. No, that was on my private line. There's no extension. But the child. Tell me about the child. Well, I liked her. She didn't impress me as a conniving type. She was awfully quick to bring up a child, though, and talk about it. I didn't have to ask her. She could be in it up to her sweet little chin. You said you had a picture of her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. She's lovely. Yeah, well, so are 10,000 other girls in L.A. But the dolphin, when you phoned, you seemed to think that was important. Yeah, yeah, but again, I'm not certain. Sadie Birch could have beefed her about your house, the dolphin, everything the girls need to recall. Who do you hired me, Mr. Harrington? Just my lawyers. Maybe Sadie Birch said something. No, 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 that doesn't make sense. No. No, somebody doesn't want this case reopened. Could be the kidnappers. Or it could be your present heirs. Oh, that's ridiculous. No, 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 no. who are your present heirs? Well, my wife. And? And Brad Elston, he's my cousin. And he's also my best friend. Yeah, but you've got a great deal of money, Mr. Harrington. Oh, Brad doesn't need my money. He's very well off in his own right. Besides, he was in there with me when you were attacked. Oh, he was, huh? Did I talk to him? Well, yes. Listen, I, uh, I just skimmed through these clippings, but Elston, wasn't he the man who delivered the ransom money? Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. Well, good, then he may be able to help us. How? Well, if I can connect Harry Birch and Sadie to the kidnapping, then there's a good chance that Marcy really is your daughter. You see, I've got to have someone to corroborate Sadie's story. Oh, Andrews, would you please ask Mr. Elston to join me in the library? Uh, what about the service? Oh, beyond reproach, absolutely. How long have you had him? Fifteen years more? Yes. Yeah. Uh, did the baby have a nurse? Yes. Inga. Uh, what about her? 
She went back home to Sweden. When? Well, a few months after the kidnapping. Like the rest of us, she refused to give up hope. That's too much. Right, this is Mr. Ross. Mr. Mr. Elson. Mr. Ross is a private investigator. Oh, now, George, not another claim. Yes, but this one has merit. Mr. Ross was given a baby shoe. It fits the description. Well, fine, fine. We'll have the pediatrician check it out. Unfortunately, he was attacked. The shoe was stolen. The shoe was stolen? Yeah. Yeah, you know, m maybe in a way, whoever took the shoe did us a favor. Well, I mean, if it wasn't the real shoe, why would they steal it? Uh, excuse us. What is it? George, may I be very frank? Why, of course. I was just thinking, suppose a clever private investigator suddenly realized that the shoe would not stand up under expert examination. Now, wouldn't he just get rid of it? Simply go on with a very lucrative case? Yeah, that's, that's frank. That's pretty frank, Mr. Elston. Let's just say I'm not that clever, huh? I got a knob in the back of my head to prove it. Mr. Ross, uh, what do you suggest? Well, I don't know. What do you want to do? Well, I'd uh, like you to continue on the case. You would? All right, I will. I'll do what any clever private investigator might do. Why all the interest in the dead guy? Well, maybe uh, the dead guy's got some live friends from 12 years ago. Well, come on, come on, come on, shoot, will you? Don't take all day. Hey, cool it up, huh? 20 bucks a game, I'll take all day and all night. Yeah. Sadie. Yeah. And Larry's girl. A Svensk. <laughs> Man. She a dish. A Svensk, you mean Swedish? Yeah, yeah. Swedish. What, uh, what, what, uh, what was the name, you remember? I don't know. Try Inga. Yeah, yeah, that's it, Inga. Is she and Larry still going together? Uh, I broke up a long time ago when Larry went to Q. Hey, Ross, why don't you lay off of me? Did his ten? I don't want to get in any trouble. I just want information. I'm so buying. Now, where would I find Larry today? Yeah. He's living in a rooming house on uh, Alvarado near Ninth. It's called Mary Potter's. Mary Potter's. Hmm? Now, I have one more question. Where would... Uh... Where was Harry Birch married the first time? Greedy, aren't you? Back in his hometown in Idaho. Small burg called LeClaire. Yeah. Okay. All right, Lucky. We'll get you next time. Anytime. Anytime, pigeon. Excuse me, darling. Oh, and uh, don't forget the man on your way out. Loser pays the time. Twelve years ago, the Harrington kid disappeared. And you might say that was just about the same time Winnie Blake started to disappear, too. From center stage, that is. Stripper par excellence, she drew crowds from every walk of life, yours truly included. But with the change of times and customs, her act began to look like silent movies. And she just disappeared. Until the phone call. She wanted to be my client. Yeah? Well, I didn't think anybody was home. My name's David Ross. Big deal. I have an appointment with Miss Blake. Flake off. I said I have an appointment with Miss Blake. You brute. 
Down, boy. Sorry. You must be Mr. Ross. I'm Winnie Blake. Miss Blake? Winnie. Just Winnie, honey. Winnie? That's Lacey. He used to be quicker. You told me to keep everybody out. How was I supposed to know? So I overslept and forgot to tell you. Big deal. Okay, sweetie. Go pour the witch's brew. Hmm? My pleasure. You know, every private investigator I've ever met always looked like a greasy penguin. But you're a doll. How about that? A private detective doll. <laughs> All right, which brings us back to the subject. Slow and easy, Dave. Never rush anything <clears throat> enjoyable. Oh. All right. Nice little shack, huh? Yeah. I bought it when I quit burlesque and the going was good. All the antiques are real. Including me. That's the cover for Curtain Time magazine. I was 25 then. Queen of burlesque. Ten grand a week. That was 20 years ago. Come on, let's have a drink. No, thanks. All right, Winnie. Why did you want to hire me? Last night, somebody tried to blow my head off. Where's the bullet? Bring in the bullet, Lacey. I'll keep it for ballistics. Yeah, it's a 38, I think. I think you're right. A lot of them around, even I got one. One what? A 38. You do, do you? Oh, now, wait a minute, Ross. Did I say anything? Well, if you think I shoot her, you're crazy. <laughs> you are a riot. Lacey tried to shoot me? Well, that's hysterical. I'm his little golden goose. Well, pretty bird, you were sitting right on that couch. You know something, Winnie? Whoever pulled that trigger was not trying to kill you. Wait a minute, I don't get it. From that window, a little old lady from Pasadena with the DTs couldn't have missed you. <sighs> you trying to say somebody tried to throw her a scare? Yeah. Ah, you're nuts. Okay, Winnie, why would somebody want to scare you? My book. What book? You mean you haven't heard about my book? Get an eyeful, doll. Two installments down, six to go. In the winter, a hardback, and then a million paperbacks. And I own the movie rights. I've had tons of publicity. Good or bad? Ha! A little of both. You see, I'm including some characters who are big shots now. They were half shots then. They did uh, naughty things they prefer no one knew about today. But I'm telling it as it really was. Baby, it's going to be a bestseller because I'm writing the truth about certain people. How many? Hmm. Maybe a couple of dozen, more or less. Not including jealous wives. Yeah, but only one fired that bullet. Well, that's right, Lacey. That's right. I want a list of all the people mentioned in your book. Current names and past performances. Well, but that'll take hours of thinking and looking up material and notes. You know, I keep a lot up in my noodle. I gotta narrow them down, Winnie, the suspects. It's after five, handsome. No dies. I've got to take a bath and fluff up for tonight. Okay. Give that to the police. So long. Hey, hold it, doll. I need you. I need you. No, police. Please. I can still remember those New York cops busting my shows. And besides, the L.A. Fuzz would think that that bullet hole is uh, just another publicity stunt. Is it? I swear. I pulled many a stunt. Fooled the cops. But this is on the level. This is for openers. What about the list of names I need? Hmm? I promise to be a good girl and do my homework. 
but not tonight. Why not tonight? It's Wednesday. So? A few of my pals from the old days have roosted here in L.A. That's my night to be with them. I always catch the uh, early show. You just might catch a bullet. I think you better stay here at home tonight. I'll stay here with you. I got a better idea. I go out and you go with me. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, don't come unglued. Have I got a gal for you. Hey, Lacey, baby. Call Judy on the phone and tell her that the best-looking private investigator in California, maybe the whole country, will pick her up in an hour. Just who am I dating tonight, huh? Judy Elliott. She's my as-told-to gal. You see, I dictate into one of those tape machines, and then she takes the tape and turns my corny words into real writing. Well, you see her. She's quite a hunk of female. trying to pull a big one on Miss Harrington. Sounds like she suckered you in, too. I didn't say I was buying, just checking. Well, lots of luck to her if she can get away with it, but I'm telling you that kid is Harry's by his first wife. You seem pretty positive about that. Listen, let me tell you about Harry. Honest, good-hearted, but just a small-time crook. He never went for a big score in his life. He didn't have the brains or the guts. Well, then why did he keep all those newspaper clippings about the kidnapping? Well, he kept clippings of lots of big hits. Studied them, always talked about pulling off something big, but like I said, no brains, yeah, no guts. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't explain the baby shoe. Well, could have been his own kid. Harry was a sentimental slob. Or, uh... <laughs> oh, Sadie bought it secondhand just for Harrington. <laughs> what about you? Did you have the guts for the big hit? Me? Yeah. Here I am putting Harry down, but I was small time, too. Maybe I had the guts, but, uh, but not the noodle. Anyhow, that's all changed now. I'm a solid citizen and will be a credit to society. My parole officer told me so. Yeah. Oh, uh, incidentally, what does Inga say? What's an Inga? An Inga is a Swedish girl who worked for the Harringtons. Inga, sure. Inga. Inga. Man, you go back a long time. I didn't know who you were talking about there for a minute. Wonder whatever happened to her. I don't know. Who knows what happens to old girlfriends? Bathrooms in the hall, nothing fancy. No, 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 I don't want that. All I want is a little, uh, a little help. Uh, no, no charity. Uh, who answers the telephone? Oh, I do. Uh, answering service goes with the rooms. This ain't no dumb. Uh huh. Well, can, uh, can you hear the rumors when they make a telephone call? <laughs> can Canary sing? I think we can do business. Come on in, Mr. Uh... Uh, Davey, just call me Davey. I like a friendly man. <laughs> Yeah, 
want to place a long-distance call person to person to uh, Boise, Idaho, to Mr. William Harden at the Daily Herald. Yeah, my, yeah, my, my number is 271-7399. David Ross. Yeah, that's right. Old mash on the rocks. Yeah. No, no, no. A client's paying for this call. Listen, uh, Bill, I've got a... Who? No, no, I never saw her again. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a fun evening. But I'd better hurry. I got a blind date tonight. Uh, listen, Bill, I got a favor, a big favor to ask of you. Would you go to a little town called uh, Lake Claire? It's, uh, yeah, L-E-C-L-A-I-R-E, -I, -E, I think. Uh, you check on a, a, a Harry Birch. You find out if he was married uh, in LeClaire, when and to who. Okay, to whom? I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, you check, check and see if they had a baby, girl, about, oh, 15 years ago, and call me back collect if you get any information. Huh? Well, if I'm not here, then shoot me a wire, okay? Yeah, thanks. Talk to you. Your man, Larry, made a call to a Mr. Elston. Davey. Honey, you have just earned yourself a bonus. Now, very quietly, tell me what he said. I was getting dressed in the bedroom. I heard a noise in here. I ran in. I saw this kid trying to grab Winnie's tapes. I tried to stop him. You sure he didn't hurt you? Only my dignity. I won't be a minute. Um, did you recognize the kid? Uh, no. He was driving a yellow Porsche. Uh, does that help? No, maybe it was stolen. Yeah. Did you get the license? Yeah, the last two numbers. Uh, Is that enough? No, I don't think so, but we'll try. The no trouble is my man at the Motor Vehicle Bureau isn't in right now. Why would a college boy be interested in Winnie's book? Maybe it's required reading. You know, progressive education. <laughs> He's going to be very disappointed. Those were last month's tapes describing Winnie's innocent childhood in Omaha. When does the dirt hit the fan? Next month. Uh-huh. Why would a kid who's not even shaving yet be interested in keeping that issue from going to press? It doesn't add up. Would you get that? It's probably Winnie telling me to hurry up. Yeah. Hello? Mr. Ross, may I speak to Miss Elliot? Find out who it is. Hello? A word of advice. Stop all work on Winnie Blake's book immediately. Winnie Blake! <laughs> oh, hello, Judy. Hi, glad to see you. 
Now, Tarzan, where's the chimp? Mm. <laughs> Who's that? Well, that's Dave Ross. He's a P.I. What? A P.I. Oh, I know. Uh, a postal inspector. Uh, no, a uh, pastrami importer. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, private investigator, eh? Glad to see you. Yeah. Now, did you come to steal some jokes from me? Not yours. You got my champagne on ice? It's Wednesday, isn't it? Come on, baby, follow me. Here we go, come on. <laughs> I got a great table for you down here. Nice big one. It's a uh, table for 22 on, uh, on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Here, baby, put her down right. Oh, that's wonderful. Get that to keep you warm or quiet. <laughs> How's the book coming along, Judy? Oh, it's warm, very warm. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, you know. Nobody could write about those days except Winnie. <laughs> oh, what a life. Just a million laughs. And you know something? If she ever got in trouble, you know, felt blue, she'd never squawk. No, she'd, she'd call me up, I'd tell her a few lousy jokes, or we'd go out and hang one on. Right, baby? Right. Well, that's a music cue if I ever heard one. Excuse me, folks. <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> Pardon me, folks. Ah, well, good evening. I'd call you ladies and gentlemen, but you know what you really are. I want to take some of you 40-year-old teeny boppers back a few generations <laughs> to that wonderful institution called burlesque. We have with us tonight the queen of the runways. And with a little encouragement, I think we can get her up here with me. How about it, folks? Winnie Blake! I said, oh, Uh, your motor's running. Well, you didn't start it. Well, then we get it wound up, set it for six o'clock. <laughs> I'm just a poor little widow with no husband. Well, your husband's not dead, he's hiding. Now, uh, tell me, miss, uh, how do porcupines make love? Carefully. Very, very carefully. <laughs> tell me, do you object to a kiss? Oh, Professor, that's one thing I don't do. Kiss? No. Object. <laughs> ba -bum, ba -bum, bum, bum. I'd ask you in, but I'm bushed. Sure. Lucky door, huh? I don't want you bothered by any more teenage kids. Are all private investigators as nice as you are? <laughs> Good night. Good night. Somebody wants to see you real bad, like. My wagon's parked over there. Move it! I didn't think people really talk like that anymore. Come on, come on. Mr. Ross. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I recognize the voice. It's the man who threatens women over the telephone. Mr. Ross, does $10,000 sound like a lot of money? Yes, I'd say $10,000 is a lot of money. That's more than I make in a year. I 
want the names Winnie's going to use in her book. Ever tried the direct approach? Frequently. Try asking Winnie yourself. I have tried to reach her by phone. I even drove out to that mausoleum she calls a home, only to be strong-armed by her latest moronic lover. Ten thousand dollars, Mr. Ross. A couple of hours, little effort, just to find out if my name is in the list. What is your name? Bring me the list. Forget it. If necessary, your client is expendable. If necessary, so is Miss Elliot. Now, wait a minute. That girl's got nothing to do with it. Winnie's just dictated the, the early part, the beginnings, the, the, the background jump. Perhaps, but I assume without her collaboration, the next deadline won't be met, will it? I'll call you tomorrow night. Uh, don't let my manner fool you. I've always gotten what I wanted, one way or the other. I'm telling you, a half an hour ago, he told me that he tried to phone you. He even came out here to see you. Did a guy like that come to see me this week? Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell me? Because you ordered me to handle all calls and visits my own way. Well, didn't you even get his name? Yeah, you know, he started getting a little nasty and I got a little rough. Oh, even your brain is muscle-bound. Yeah? Well, I'm sick of playing doorman and bodyguard around here. And Romeo. Oh, don't mind us. We, uh, we squabble all the time. Yeah. Well, uh, what, did you do your homework? How about my list of names? I swear. First thing in the morning, I'll go to work on it. Oh, boy. It's, uh, 2.30. Yeah, all right, okay, you need your beauty sleep. Thanks. But tomorrow morning, bright and early, you have that list of... Stay a little while, huh? I never get to sleep till morning anyway. You could stay over. Well, I've got four guest rooms. And then I'll feel... protected. The list, tomorrow morning, first thing. Ross! Keep me company, huh? Mama, sorry. on you like this, Dave, but I had to. I didn't want to scare Winnie, but I knew that she'd hired you. And... Sit down, sit down. Oh, thanks. Well, anyway, I was just closing the joint up, and this guy Ames comes in, and... Uh, Who? Nick Ames. He's a big wheeler dealer, you know, merger, oils, you name it. Married to some real straight society broad in New York. Never heard of him. Crocker? No, no, thanks. He'd never been in the papers, you know. He's smart. I remember what a tough guy he was, you know, back in the old days, New York. And then I hadn't seen him in 25 years, I don't think. But when he walks in, he's all dapper, you know. About five foot ten, silvery gray hair, flower in his buttonhole. I thought you didn't know him. I don't. He offered you dough for the list of Winnie's names. <laughs> Dave Ross and his crystal ball. What can Winnie pin on him? 
Let's see. 25 years ago, we were playing the uh, Times Square circuit, Winnie and me, and he was a punk cop on the vice squad. Oh, yeah, he, he, he tried to shake us down, you know. He was uh, trying to get some loot from the weekly take. He last on the squad, oh, I'd say, about, uh, about a year, and then he quit. And the punk beginning a big shot. Yeah, Mr. Ames is right. That would not look good in print. Hello? Yeah, hello. This is David Ross. I want to talk to Winnie. She's sleeping. So wake her up. Hey, babe. Babe. Uh. Sherlock's on a horn. Hello? Yeah, listen, uh, this is David, honey. Hello, doll. I just want to ask you. Knock it off, huh? Yeah. Are you using the Nick Ames extortion racket in your book? Well, I never even considered using Nicky Ames. I only got swell memories of that guy. Sure was a good looker. No, I wouldn't louse up Nicky Ames. Yeah. All right, thanks, sweetie. Pleasant dreams. Okay. You too. So? But you never even considered using Ames in the book. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, is it? You know she's not going to use Ames. I know it, but Ames doesn't know it. Oh. Can you contact him? No. But... He did say he was going to call me. Oh, that's a big help. Keep in touch with him. Well, where are you going? I still got a lot to do before dark. Oh. Call it instinct, call it blue sky, something inside me kept saying there was some connection between the Winnie Blake book and the Harrington kidnapping. Twelve years ago, Winnie had to be the consort of every top mobster along the stem. Could be she was going to reveal something in those true confessions of hers that would shed some light on the inside of that Harrington snatch. No proof. No proof at all. Just that same old melody that played over and over again in my mind. much about music. I am just an amateur. What do you want? Information. Where is Larry Rogers? Who is Larry Rogers? Larry Rogers is the man who called you today. And hey, you got trouble, Selston. You know, my, uh... My cousin thinks you are a very smart detective. But I don't. I think you're like me. You're nothing but an amateur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whatever we are, Larry Rogers is a professional. I told you I don't know any Larry Rogers. Oh, come on, come on. Will you cut it? Will you just cut it out? Larry Rogers is the bag man that you delivered the money to. And yet, less than one week later, he knocked off a hawk shop for exactly $187.68, plus a 10-year stretch of queue. Now, why would a man do that who had just been handed a quarter of a million bucks? Kind of hard to figure out, isn't it? Huh? Unless, of course, you never delivered the money to him in the first place. <laughs> that is absurd. If the, um, the kidnappers didn't get the money like you said, 
How come they didn't contact my cousin again? They were scared. They were afraid it was a trap. Now, you listen to me. I dropped that money at the appointed place. I don't know any more than that. Well, I do. When all the action started, Rogers knew that an investigation would point to him, so he didn't have time to wait. He started moving on you today. You start your move right now. Oh, come on. Don't be stupid. Tell me where Larry is. Or are you going to get yourself killed? Well, maybe you've got a quarter of a million bucks you can hand over to him. But he also might demand 10 years' interest. The front door is right through there. Silly son. with you? Yeah. Now you get out here. It's the Stay A While Motel, number four, Ventura off Laurel. Which is a pretty good place to hide from Larry Rogers, right? Sadie, I know it's Larry. Where is he? Sadie, don't be stupid. Come on, where is he? Caldwell Hotel. It's on Adams. All right, you keep the door locked. Stay there. I'll be there as soon as I've seen Larry. I told you before, he's a small-time crook of the record. You didn't go down to that flea bag to see him? No. Who did you go down to see? I went down to see Brad Elston. And Larry Rogers, being there was just a surprise to you. No. No? No, I had a hunch that uh, Brad Elston went there to meet him. Now, you would admit that it was a little unusual for a man like Elston to be connected with someone like Larry Rogers? Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Lieutenant. It's very unusual. You know, the more agreeable you get, the more positive I am that you've got something to hide. That's your hang-up. All right. Let's try it another way. How did you know that Elston was on his way down to see Rogers? I had a hunch. Did you know Elston had a gun? No. But I had a hunch. Were you working for Elston? Nope. Who are you working for, Ross? Oh, come on, Lieutenant. That's privileged information. You ought to know that. Ross, I've got a double homicide to solve. Double? That's right. You mean Elston and Larry didn't kill each other? You didn't know. Well, you didn't give me a chance to ask. They both had guns. Neither was fired. You got any ideas? I don't know. I, thought I was sure they killed each other. I, uh... Wow, this is like a blank wall. There is one wild idea, though. Let's hear it. Well, uh, Larry had a, had a girlfriend a long time ago, a Swedish chick named uh, Inga. 
Yeah, I was just going back to Sweden. She came back after a year. And we watched her for about five years after the Harrington kidnapping. And she died. How? A natural death. Yeah, well, I'm fresh out of ideas, Lieutenant. And I'm beginning to get a lot of new ones. Thanks for mentioning England. Opens up a whole new train of thought. Yeah, well, so long, Lieutenant. It's been good. Sit down, Ross. Uh, look, I've got some I said things. sit down. All right. Quite a coincidence. Inga was the uh, Harrington's nursemaid. Harrington's cousin, Elston, delivered the ransom. Larry Rogers was Inga's sweetheart. Yeah, well, if you're interested in those kind of things, I guess it's kind of interesting. Ross, you working for Harrington? Okay, get out. Who is it? Ross. Did you find Larry? Why say, honey, listen to me. I lied to you. I'm a private investigator. I know. Sadie told me. Yeah, but you were right about the dolphin. You didn't dream it. It's real. What about Larry? Shut up. Did Sadie leave this room at all tonight? No, we've both been here since noon. Hey, what is this? When Larry phoned you today, did he try to scare you off? He threatened me. Listen, I gotta blow town. You tell Harrington he owes me money for getting his kid back. It's payoff time. Marcy, honey, that's the way it is. Mr. Ross, please. I'm so frightened. I... I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't even know who I am. I believe you're Ellen Harrington. But if my father, I mean Harry Birch, if he took me away from my real parents, why? He was nice to me. I thought he loved me. Don't try to understand it all at once, all right? Come Look, on. what about me? I want to talk about Larry. He was Harry's partner in the kidnapping, wasn't he? Sure, sure he was. He had to be. Otherwise, why would he care about you contacting Harrington? Yeah, I guess so. Harry would have never pulled it alone. It's all guesswork with you, isn't it? Because you weren't in on it in the first place. Did Larry say so? Larry didn't say anything. By the time I got to the hotel, he was dead. So you can relax now, Sadie. Larry's dead. Harry's dead. Inga's dead. There's nobody left to tie you into it. Come on, Morris. I'm going to take you home to the Harringtons. Hey, what about me? You? Oh, you'll get yours, Zadie. My own cousin. I can't believe it. Did he help them plan the kidnapping? No, I don't think he had anything to do with that. I think he just stole the ransom money. He could have taken her life. Yeah. But they didn't. Well, you've got your daughter back now, I, I think. I can't give you 100% guarantee, however. Uh, Harry Birch came from Idaho, a small town called Leclerc. I had a man up there check it out. Uh, there is a record of a marriage and the subsequent death of the woman. But no record of a child from that marriage? No. If there had been a child? Well, then there would be serious doubt. But as it is. When Andrews let you in today, she seemed like such a frightened little thing. Well, she's had her whole life turned upside down today, Mr. Harrington. I can hardly blame her for that. What about your wife? <laughs> I haven't heard Margaret laugh like that in years. I checked with the library to see if there were any corporations Ames could be linked with. Call five. No one even knows he's left New York. I phoned every private airport in town just in case he flew in on his own. Winnie's taping a chaffer today, so I have some time off. Good. 
only fair. I have to see Mrs. Forrester tonight. You know, she wants me to write an article on her new hospital project. You know, David, the Mrs. Byron Forrester. She gives a fortune to charity. What was Lacey doing here? He was trying to romance me. Oh? I laughed at him, brought down his blood pressure, and sent him back to win. Uh huh. Don't you believe me? How many names does Lacey know? What names? From when he's passed. How should I know? You know most of them. How many did you give to Lacey? Don't be a fool, David. That's it. He takes the names that you give him, and then he pressures them. Blackmail. You get out of here! What are you? I'm suspicious. I'd suspect my own mother. If I knew who she was, sit down. Oh, you get lost. You wake me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I spent the entire day trying to track down Ames to keep Winnie alive. That's your job. Sure, I did it for you. Doesn't anybody care that I'm in danger? I care. Listen, I'm sticking to this job to protect you. I don't want you to get hurt because of Winnie. As for Lacey, well, I'm tired and tense. Jealous? Hmm. Of Lacey? Hmm. Oh, you're tired. <laughs> you coop. You know, I'm hungry now. I know I shouldn't be because we just ate, but I am. We ate six hours ago. What? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> oh. What is it, time? Mm. Mrs. Forrester. Mm. I don't want you to go. David, are you worried? No, I'm just juggling in the dark. Somewhere out there is a kid in the yellow sports car. I wonder what he's up to. And then there's our friend Ames. I wonder how many other guys like Ames there are. Hmm? Master Sleuth. It's Winnie. And what are you doing over there? Don't answer if it incriminates you. <laughs> it won't. Hey. Hey, the drinking lamp is lit. You and Julie come over for some brew, huh? Well, I, uh... I don't like being here alone, you know? Without a man to fill the ice bucket. Where's Beauty Boy? He's at the gym admiring his muscles. What about the list, honey? I'll start taping it right now. Promise? Promise. And by the time you and Judy get over here and have a couple of drinky poos, I'll be done. Okay. That's a good girl. We'll be right over. Dave. <laughs> Scared, but I think she's doing her homework. Winnie? Winnie! Maybe she's up in her bedroom. Let's go, quick. Judy! Judy! Come on, honey. 
Stay with me, kid. Hang on, I need you. Judy! Are you all right? Come on, kid, I need you. All right? That machine was going. She was talking into it. I gotta hear what it says, but I don't want my prints on it. Will you turn it on? and tell him he doesn't need to worry. He was always good to me, which was bad for me, which I didn't mind. <laughs> okay, okay. Now for those names I'm really using. There are exactly 14. The first one is the study. What's that sound? That you, Lacey? I'm in here, Angel Puss. It's about time. How did you get in here? Don't be a goon. Put down that gun. Let's talk things over, huh? Come on, please. Act your age. Please say something. Talk! Say something! <sighs> it's hot, creep. Listen, I've got to hear this again, but I haven't got time. I need a copy, Julie. Let's get out of here. Can you make me a copy? That no, one. I've got to leave this one for the police. Can you make me a copy? Yes. Fast? Yes. Well, then do it. Where are you going? She bought this for the car to drive around town. Get ready. Now the dirt flies. So somebody Winnie Blake knew very well from the past shot her with a 38 to keep her from finishing her book. Yeah, it's possible. Which somebody? I don't know. You don't know or you don't want to tell? I don't want to be shot at that. Sit down. Blow it. Now, I told you once, Winnie never revealed one single name to me. Where's her boyfriend? Lacey, the lover. On the moon. How do I know? Could be out drunk, lying in the gutter. Playing pool, I was some girl. How do I know? He was not at home when Winnie called me at 9.30. Winnie Blake hires you to find out who was gunning for. Yeah, that's right. Yet she took her time before she started spilling a list of possible suspects. That borders on lunacy. No argument. She was an oddball. This dame was busted eight times in New York by Vice for lewd performance between 1936 and 1942. So she never won a good conduct medal. Who cares? She was my client, somebody killed her, and that hurts. It's lousy advertising. Now, either you arrest me and book me on some phony charge, or I'm walking out of here right now. Dave, I've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, yeah, look, you look, 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 what would you find on that Porsche? Who owns it? Hey, now, it's not that easy. Two numbers doesn't narrow it down all the way. Here's the list of possibles. Yeah, thanks. Forrester.
Alan. Not enough. Where's Judy? I said, where's Judy? What has he done to her? Who are you talking about? I'm talking about Judy Elliott, Mrs. Forrester. Patrick. Now, he's all right. Now, where is she? She telephoned about an hour ago. She was coming out here by way of... There was a smash-up. She stopped. She was delayed. Why has this happened? He made the first move for one thing, for another thing. He may be the one that killed a client of mine tonight. He definitely is the one that stole some tapes from Judy a couple of days ago. Now, my question is, why? If he's harmed one hair on Judy's head, so help me, he's going to end up in the morgue before the police ever get a chance at him. Now, I suggest you tell me the truth right now. Who are you? My name is David Ross. I'm a private investigator and a client of mine, Winnie Blake, has been murdered a little while ago. Winnie is dead? Very. Oh, my... I guess I'll have to trust you. I think you'd better. Patrick, don't worry. Don't worry, David. Now, sit down. How to begin? From the beginning. When I was young, I worked with Winnie. Worked? Burlesque? Pasties and all, Mr. Ross. There was a notorious racketeer. He was shot down and I was forced to testify. Surprise, surprise. And then? Out here, life became different. I met Byron Forrester. He knew? Everything. I loved him. He hid what I'd been from everyone. And then he died and I was alone. Life went on. Eventually, a good life. Until you heard about Winnie's memoirs. I was forced to tell my son. He was understanding. Understanding? All the way to murder? He didn't kill her. I can prove we were both at the beach club tonight. That can be checked. What about Judy? We intended only to frighten her tonight. Make her tell us if I was mentioned in the book. David! Your houseboy let me and I heard voices. Well, let's get out of here. Why? Why? Mrs. Forrester. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Ross will explain. I'm sorry there never was any assignment. Come on. You better go. Come on, let's get out of here. Listen, Mrs. Forrester. For your sake, I hope you're telling the truth. I hope. <laughs> It's all right, Alice. There's no need to worry. Uh, I thought if I waited here long enough, you'd show up. Just don't touch. The girl's not here yet. She uh, came up in separate cars. Don't worry about it, will you? The Bureau just wants you. Yeah? Now. Yeah? You uh, going to put me under arrest? Oh, don't tempt me. Let's go, Ross. Why? Winnie's stallion will frolic in pastures no more. Lacey? Dead? Completely. states he was killed early this morning, then dropped into Panga Canyon. The same 38. Why was he killed? Who knows? Let's begin at the beginning. Why was Winnie killed? Her book. Who are you protecting, Ross? The good fairy. Will you get off my back? I told you I didn't know who she was going to name. I don't believe you. That's your hang-up. Can I go? No. All right. Where did Lacey go before he was shot? A few bars, then wound up at some girl's apartment. Mm -hmm. Question. Why didn't Lacey come running when he'd heard that Winnie was killed, huh? I don't know. I thought you might. Well, you thought wrong. Can I go? Not yet. We found something clutched in Lacey's hand. What does this mean to you? Didn't you know? Lacey was a flower child. Why don't you tell the police about Ames? Why don't you say Ames wears a carnation? 
I, I, uh... Better answer is that, well, David. I'm scared. I don't want to get shot, too. Oh, honey, that's precisely the reason I didn't want to bring Ames into the picture. Don't be enigmatic, please. No, I'm not being enigmatic. But think how Ames works. Who, next to any, would have been the one person to put the finger on him? You. Hmm? Instead, Lacey gets the one, was the one who gets killed. Put the carnation in Lacey's hand, David. Ames wouldn't kill Lacey himself. He's too smart for that. You could hire a dozen hoods for that purpose. No, there's a missing piece somewhere. A missing... Turn on the tape recorder, will you? Good to me, which was bad for me, which I didn't mind. <laughs> okay, okay. Now for those names I'm really using. They're exactly 14. The first one is 30. Funny, I wound that tape as tight as I could, and yet there's that sound again. David. That you, Lacey? I'm in here, Angel Puss. It's about time. How did you get in here? Turn it off. David, where are you going? It's quarter of two. Good. We just been closing up. You stay here. I'll be back. David, where are you going? I'm gonna bring the curtain down, baby. Must have second sight. I was gonna call you in the morning. Buy a drink, pal? Yeah, bourbon. Oh, just fixing the clothes up. Hmm. Have a lot of the radio. Oh, yeah. yeah. Poor Lacey. Lacey the lunkhead. Yeah, but he was good to Winnie. If anybody was good to her is okay in my books. Winnie. It's like a hunk chewed right out of my life. I can't believe she's gone. All because of a stinking book. That's what you think it was, huh? The book. Sure. First Winnie. Then uh, Lacey got wise to Ames Pass, see? Tried to put the screws to him, but uh, Ames would knuckle under. Boom. You, uh... I figure the cops are on the Ames already? Nope. Well, uh, after you told him about them, why? I didn't. You didn't, uh... No, I didn't tell the police anything about Ames. Oh, uh, why not? You should've used matches, Rusty. Huh? Matches? Yeah, you, know, you comics are interesting. Very interesting. I guess there are first rate, second rate, all the way down to fifth rate comics, right? Right. I guess a fifth rate comic is just, uh, just some guy who couldn't make it. No class, no style. Am I getting close? Close. Like you, Rusty? No style. No class. Fifth rate. Thanks, pal. I, uh, didn't know you were a critic. Critic? Oh, no, not me. No, but I've been around long enough to know the difference between a good show and a bad show. It's like that last performance of yours. What are you talking about? He just didn't pull it off, kid. What? Trying to make everybody think that somebody wanted to kill Winnie because of her book. That was, uh, what do you call it, a good routine? And putting that slug in Winnie's living room wall, that was class. That, that showed real class. But when you tried to make me think that Ames was the killer so that I'd sell him to the police, oh, buddy, come on. Now, that's when your act fell apart, boy. 
Dave, are you sick in the head? And then that stick. Stick? A shtick. Shtick, yeah. That shtick uh, that you used, like when uh, you put the red carnation into Lacey's hand. Oh, boy, that, that had no taste to it at all. It was corn, pure corn. Rusty, you are fifth rate. The funny thing is, though, it would have worked. All of it would have all worked, except for one thing. Winnie's tape recorder. And that stupid lighter of yours. Click, click, click. Winnie. After all I did for that dame, you know, I really loved her. Hell, I was her first husband. You hear me? Hmm? I was her first husband until she dumped me. Maybe... Maybe she just outgrew you. Yeah. I said to her, Winnie, for once, let me be a man. No. She said she was going to take this club away from me. Once I paid her every cent I owed her. You mean Winnie staked you to this club? Oh, that was years ago. But she said she was broke. Broke? Yeah, Winnie got on a religious binge and one of those cult guys took her for a bundle. Guy by the name of Thaddeus. Yeah. How much did he pay to waste her? He was afraid she was going to expose him in the book. That's what you told him, wasn't it? Right on the button. Winnie. Always needed money for things like Lacey. Two bit hunk of beef. Threatened me. Told me he was gonna tell the cops that I was out at Winnie's unless I paid him off. Pay him off? I'm flat broke. So, uh, what's the next act, Rusty? This. The calling card. Nicholas Ames. Cops are going to find it in your pocket. But Dave, you're going to be dead. Mr. Ross, thank you for bringing Ellen back to us. Uh, Mrs. Harrington, did, uh, did you tell anyone else that I was in the case? No, no. Thaddeus, the, the psychic? Yes. Thaddeus? He has two assistants, his temple disciples. Uh, Mrs. Harrington, <clears throat> uh, do you, uh, assist Thaddeus with any uh, financial support? Yes, I've given him a great deal of money. And promised him more in your will as your heir? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've got to get the phone. Well, this one right here? Uh, no, no, I'd rather use one in my office, if you don't mind. Uh, would you see me out? Yes. Oh, excuse me. I'm glad you're back together again. I'll see you again soon, Marcy. Uh, uh, Ellen. Bye, Mr. Ross. Bye.
you think Thaddeus did it? Well, who else? Uh, wouldn't uh, Ellen have been the logical target? Of course, but they couldn't find her. They followed me to Elson's house, and then they followed Elson down to Larry's hotel. They killed Larry because he was the only one who could back up Sadie's story. What about Brad? Yeah, what about Brad? Was he always wealthy? Well, yes, he had a little setback in the stock market a little while ago. Uh, don't tell me about 13 years ago. Yes, but it was just a small difficulty. It happens to all of us. A small difficulty that was uh, fixed by stealing a quarter of a million dollars. My wife mustn't know about Brad. She doesn't even know he's dead yet. But she'll have to know eventually. Right now, her only interest is Ellen. Tell me, how do you feel about the kid? My wife believes we found our daughter again. I'm willing to believe it, too. Okay. I don't know how to thank you. Well... Shall I pay you now? No, no, no. Tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Harris. Good night. Tomorrow. Well, that about ties it up, then. Once you poison Blue, pick up Sadie. If you can't make the kidnapping stick, you've always got her on attempted extortion. Yeah. No. no, 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 Lieutenant, no. Come on, I'll fill in the blank space for you tomorrow. I'm pushed. Good night. Checked further, no reliable records, but possible Alice and Harry Birch did have a child. Saving my life. Dirty Dancing's Jennifer Grey gets involved in some dirty business in the legal world next this afternoon. A colleague's murder leaves no shortage of suspects, and her efforts to nail the killer leave her wondering just who she can trust. A case for murder follows shortly on five.